नमस्कार सर्वे सुस्वागतम वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस फोर्थ क्लास ऑन हाइग्री उपासमहे वेयर वी आर लर्निंग द मीनिंग ऑफ द हाइग्री वस्त्र ऑफ स्वामी वेदांत देशिका गेट स्टार्टेड शेयर द स्क्रीन स्क्रीन इज विजिबल स्टार्ट विद आचार्य वंदनम लक्ष्मीनाथ सरंभा नाथया मुन मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा श्रीवत्सवीर रघ्वीश कृपालब्धात्म जीवन आत्रे श्रीमाकटनाथार्य कविताकेसरी वेदाताचार्यवर्यो मे सन्नीता सदा हृदी ज्ञानंदमय देव निर्मल स्फटिका कृति आधारम सर्व विद्यामुपास्मे सो वी हेव लुक्ड एट द फर्स्ट फोर वर्सेस ऑफ द हाईग्रीव स्त्रोत्र टू दास्ट क्लास सो वील स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दि फिफ्थ वर्स टूडे स्टार्ट विद वर्स फर्स्ट श्लोका गोस् लाइक दिस विशुद्ध विज्ञान घन स्वरूप विज्ञान विश्राणन बद्ध दीक्ष दयानिधि देहभृता शरण्यम देव हयग्रीवह प्रपद्ये रिपीट दट वन मोर विशुद्ध विज्ञान घन स्वरूप विज्ञान विश्राणन बद्ध दीक्ष दयानिधि देहभृता शरण्यम देव हयग्रीवह प्रपद्ये Let's look at the Pada Vibhaga, the words that are there in this uh, stotra, in this shloka. Vishuddha Vigyana Ghana Swarupa, that is one big compound word. So let's see second Pada, Vigyana Vishrana Na Baddha Diksham, that's another uh, compound word. Then De- Dayanidhim, Deha Vrita Sharanyam, Devam, Hayagrivam, Aham Prapadhyay. Okay, so almost the words are big words are compound words, and there is only one sandhi over here. Haya grivam aham prapati. So the haya grivam and aham have been uh, split as such. There's only one combination of words there actually. Okay. Um, so coming to the uh, anvaya to the um, prose order. So prapati is the verb that we have here. Prapati is I am doing sir. I am doing prapati. I surrender. Aham prapati. I surrender. To whom do I surrender? I surrender to Devam Hayagriva. So this is the principal part here. Devam Hayagriva. Aham prapati. So what kind of a Devam Hayagriva? That is what we have in these other uh, words that we have here. So Vishuddha Vigyana Ghana Swarupam, Vigyana Vishrana Na Baddha Diksham, Daya Nidhim, Deha Brtam Sharanyam, Devam Hayagriva. Aham prapati. so almost we have it in the same order right so um, we will look at the meaning of the word by word meaning of this particular vishuddha vigyana ghana swarupa so vishuddha vishuddha is very pure shuddha pure very pure vigyana ghana swarupa vigyana is knowledge ghana solid it is like filled with knowledge okay. it is It it is knowledge itself. Okay, almost like the Vigyana Ghana Swarupa. So one whose form is fully filled with pure knowledge, with very pure knowledge. So that is Vishuddha Vigyana Ghana Swarupa. Vigyana Vishrana Na Baddha Diksham. Vigyana again knowledge. Vishrana Na Vishrana Na means one who uh, you want to donate or gift it. Okay, Baddha Diksham. So Diksha Diksha typically means that it's a single pointed. a dedication that you have taken a vow to do something so baddha you have taken a vow you have taken a vow for something what have what has the vow been taken for vigyana vishranana so there is a diksha that has been taken to donate or spread knowledge to everyone to donate knowledge or to gift knowledge to everyone right so vigyana vishranana baddha diksha it's a second word daya nidhi daya compassion nidhi treasure house so is a treasure house of daya treasure house of compassion okay, so that who is a treasure house of compassion deha bhritam sharanyam 
Deha, body, right? Bhita, one who is having a body. That is any Jeevatma for any being which has a body, right? So that is Deha. So every single being that exists in this universe, in this world, Deha Brita, for any Jeeva, for any being, Sharanyam. Sharanya is, is the refuge or the only refuge for every being that exists in this world. Deha Brita, Sharanyam. Devam, that shining effulgent. I agree with Bhagavan. Aham, I, Prapadye, I surrender. So, Prapadye, it's Prapati, essentially means Sharanagati or surrender. So, I surrender to that Lord Hayagriva, to that effulgent Hayagriva Bhagavan, who is a treasure house of compassion, who is the only refuge for any being, for any Jiva, for any Jivatma, whose form is filled with very pure knowledge and one who has taken a diksha to donate knowledge to everyone. So, Devam Hayagrivam Aham Prapadde. That's the main sentence as such. And the rest of the phrases here are adjectives to that Devam Hayagriva, to describe that Deva Hayagriva. So, Devam Hayagriva is Deha Bhritam Sharanyam. That Deva Hayagriva is Dayanidhim. That Deva Hayagriva is Vijnanana Vishranana Bhadha Diksham. That Deva Hayagriva is Vishuddha Vijnana Kanaswaru. So the words to pay attention to here are Vijnana Ghanaswarupa, Vishuddha Vijnana Ghanaswarupa. So pure knowledge. As we have been seeing in the last few uh, shlokas also, it's always a reference to the purity of the knowledge. So Vishuddha Vijnana Ghanaswarupa. And this is a very interesting phrase here. Vijnana Vishranana Baddha Diksha. He's taken a vow. He's taken a Diksha that he will donate knowledge to everyone. He will gift knowledge to everyone. He'll spread knowledge to everyone. Daya Nidhin, and he is a treasure house of Daya, compassion. Deha Bhritam Sharanyam, Devam Hayagrivam Aham Prapati. So this is the, these are the words that we have here. So this is the word by word meaning. There are of course deeper uh, um, meanings and deeper uh, things to look at for this particular shloka. Because this is a very important shloka where he is doing Prapati. Devam Hayagrivam Aham Prapati. So com complete surrender is being done by uh, Swami Deshika. So, uh, surrender being the, you know, the most important aspect in our uh, tradition. So, we will look at how this surrender has been uh, portrayed over here. So, Vishuddha Vijnana Ghanaswaru, right? So, that is the first phrase. Okay, we'll start from Devam Hayagriva Aham Prapati. So, that's our primary phrase, right? So, core part of the shloka is Devam Hayagriva Aham Prapati. So I surrender to Sri Hayagriva Bhagavan. That is Devam Hayagriva Maham Prapadye. Deha Bhritam Sharanyam Devam Hayagriva Maham Prapadye. Who is the refuge? Sharanya for Deha Bhritam, for all the beings in this world. So this is so Deha Bhritam Sharanyam Devam Hayagriva Maham Prapadye is the first part. Now his Shuddha Sattva Swarupa, Vishuddha Vijnana Ghana Swarupa. So we are looking at his Swarupa as his form. So his Swarupa is Shuddha Sattva Swarupa. There is no mixing of other um, Rajo or Tamoguna in it. It's Shuddha Sattva Swarupa. So it's an embodiment of pure unalloyed knowledge. So that's what we mean by Vishuddha Vijnana Ghana Swarupa. So it's Vijnana Ghana, unalloyed knowledge. There's nothing other than Vijnana. And it is pure, pure unalloyed knowledge. And he has taken the vow to bestow his knowledge on all beings in this universe to uplift them from this samsara. Vijnana, Vishranana, Baddha, Diksha. So he wants to give his knowledge, bestow his knowledge on all beings. Now, why does he do that? He does that in order to, to save us, to uplift us from this samsara. So samsara is this cycle of birth and death that we are all going through. Okay. And he wants to do this without even our asking for it. Asking for it, he wants to give his knowledge so that we are uplifted from this samsara, from the cycle of birth. But why does he do this? He does this because he is Dayanidhi. He is the personification of Daya. He is, com he is compassion. He is 
storehouse of compassion. So he, he being so compassionate, he just wants to give us his knowledge so that we are saved from this cycle of samsara, of the cycle of birth and death. To that particular Bhagavan who has all these qualities, we are doing prapati, we are doing sarat. This is the overall meaning of the shloka. Now we can see that there are certain elements of sharanagati. The elements of sharanagati are embedded in the shloka. We will look at that. It's on some of these words and what they signify. Okay. So let's look at this uh, uh, the shloka from the last pada. Devam hayagriva maham prapati. As I said, that's the core part of the shloka. So I seek refuge in supreme hayagriva bhagavan. Now, um, normally when we talk of prapatti, right, or sharanagati, um, we say that there are two ways, upaya, to obtain, to attain God. So one is bhakti and one is sharanagati. That is in our tradition. So now, out of bhakti and sharanagati, bhakti is supposed to be a guru upaya, sharanagati is a lagu upaya. Guru upaya means it is, you need to do a lot more work. Okay, it is, it's a little heavy. Lagu upaya is a light one. So for prapatti, it's supposed to be something which is much lighter than doing bhakti. So in the first four shlokas, there has been a talk about doing bhakti to Bhagavan. Right? So here, uh, Swami Deshika says, I will do prapati to because that seems to be a lighter uh, uh, upaya, lighter way. And that is what I will be able to do. So let me do prapati. Okay? So devam hayagriyo maham prapati is what he is doing. So he is doing prapati. Now, this Devam Hayagriya Maham Prapati, and there are four other phrases we saw, right? So, we can treat each of these four phrases right, separately and see how we can understand the meaning of this the verse. So, we start with Vishuddha Vijnana Ghanaswarupam. So, Vishuddha Vijnana Ghanaswarupam Devam Hayagriva Maham Prapati. So, here we are say, talking about the Swarupa, the Swarupa of, of Bhagavan Hayagriva. So, that Swarupa is Vishuddha Vidyana Ghanaswarupa. So what is this Swarupa? Swarupa is something which uniquely identifies what that particular person is, right? So, and he being Bhagavan, he being the Supreme Lord, right? He is Chida Chit Vilakshana. That is, he is different from all the Chit Tattva and the Achit Tattva that exists in this universe. So we have already seen this in the very first verse where we said that we can look at certain characteristics as the defining characteristics, right? Swarupa Nirupaka Dharma, right? The one which describes, which which uh, defines that Swarupa. Okay. So we saw that Satyatva, Satyatva, Jnanatva, uh, Anantatva, Anandatva, Amalat. These are five characteristics we saw as defining characteristics. Satya, uh, Truth, Jnana, Knowledge, Ananta, Infinite, Anand, ananta endless, infinite, anandatva, pure bliss, amalatva, um, blemishless. These are five characteristics. Of so, so these characteristics you can see are alluded to, are what are being specified in this very first verse. Vishuddha vidyana ghanaswarupa. So vishuddha indicates no blemishes. So that is the amalatva that comes over there. And vidyana ghana, it refers to the Completeness of knowledge. So now knowledge is completely there. So these two terms itself suffice to refer to the Supreme Brahman. So these two terms indirectly give us the essence of those five terms that we talk about. Okay. So Jnanatva and Amalatva. That kind of starting from Satya, Satyam Jnanam, Anandam, Anandam, Amalatva. So of these, the Jnanatva and the Vijnana Ghana, and you say it is full of completely filled with knowledge that automatically indicates that it is uh, that is also that's the Satyatva and the Anandatva also come along with that. So Vishuddha Vijnana Ghanaswarupam indicates that we are referring to Hayagriva Bhagavan as the Supreme Paramatma. Okay. So that is the first. So through that Supreme Paramatma we are doing Prapati. We are doing Saratta. So next phrase we have is Vijnana Vishranana Baddha Diksha. So what has he done now? He has taken a vow. Right? Baddha Diksha. Baddha. You know, Baddha is uh, tied. He is tied with the Diksha. He has taken up that vow. What is the, the, uh, the vow that we said? It is for Vijnana Vishranana. So Vijnana is knowledge, special, special knowledge, right? Vishesha Jnana. So Vishesha Jnana. So he wants to, his vow is to gift his Vishesha Jnana to all those 
to surrender. And what will this knowledge do? It will free us from this samsara. So that is the speciality of this, of this Vishesha Jnana. So you can look at it as Jnana Yoga. You can look at it as all the yoga that we require in order to be free from the samsara. Right? And you can also look at it as all types of knowledge. So as we saw in the beginning itself, right? All kinds of knowledge is given by Bhagavan. So to, 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 he gives us all the knowledge that we require. So that Vijnana, Vishranana, Baddha, Diksha. Bhagavan has this kind of a Diksha. We also have a reference to it from Bhagavad Gita, right? So from, in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan says in chapter 10, he says, Tesham Satata Yuktana Bhajatam Priti Purvakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Enamam Upayantite. So for those who are coming to me with bhakti, right? Who are coming always, who are satata yukta, they're always engaged in me. They're always thinking of me. For them, priti purvakam buddhi yogam dadami. I give them, very, I, priti purvakam, with, with a lot of love, I give them the buddhi yoga. I give them the jnana. I give them this vishesha jnana through which they will attain me, through which they yena maam upayanti. So they'll come to me with that. So they'll be able to attain me with this knowledge that I give. So he has taken this vow, right? To give the knowledge, and he has himself said it in the Bhagavad Gita. So, okay, so that is that is the diksha. That's the kind of love that Bhagavan has taken. So he is waiting. He's just waiting. He's just giving it to us. We just have to take it. That's all, right. So that is what it says. Okay. And similarly, when you say diksha, you know this term diksha is a very um, very strong term. So when you say so, see Bhagavan has sharanagata rakshana as his diksha. So anybody who surrenders to him, Bhagavan will never let go of them. Right. So even in um, in Ramayana, right, we have a reference to this, right? So uh, in the Aranyakanda, when the sages come and, you know, complain to Rama that they are all, uh, you know, under, they are all suffering under the Rakshasas. So he tells them that I will, I will take care of you. I will, I will destroy the Rakshasas and I take care of you. So at that time, Sita asks him, right? So Sita Devi says, now, um, the Rakshasas are not done, have not done anything to you, but how can you take a vow like this? Okay, for doing something that you have, that nobody has harmed you, but you're taking this vow. So then he says at the time, right? He says, Apyaham jivitam jahyam. I may even give up my life, but I will not give up my word. So I have, these are sharanagata. These people have come to me. They have surrendered to me. So I will take care of them. So that is Bhagavan for us, right? So he is, he is always in this sharanagata, um, rakshana diksha. He is there to protect those who are surrendered to him. So that is our speciality of Bhagavan uh, Hayabri. So he is in, he is he is in this um, diksha, and but but why why is he doing this? Why does he has the diksha? Right, that is because he is dayanidhi. So dayanidhi dehabrtam sharan dayanidhi devam hayagriva maham prapat. So we just saw vijnana vishrana the baddha diksha devam hayagriva maham prapat. So the third thing we are looking at is dayanidhi. Devam Hayagriva Maham Prabhati. Daya Nidhi. He is treasure house of Daya, compassion. So compassion, Daya, is the prime guna of Bhagavan that activates all his other Kalyana gunas. In fact, uh, Swami Deshika has done Daya Shatakam, where he talks about the Daya Devi of Bhagavan, okay, of Srinivasa Bhagavan. So he is Daya, he is, he is and, and there he says, if Daya were not there, none of your other qualities will shine forth. So Daya is the prime quality. And all his auspicious qualities, all his Kalyana Gunas, Daya has to be there. Only then others will others will actually work. So he being the storehouse of Daya, he is willing to bestow his knowledge on us so that we are out of this cycle of samsara. Next we say the fourth phrase, Deha Britam Sharanyam Devam Hayagriva Maham Prapati. So Deha Britam Sharanyam. So all deha brit, right? Deha, deha's body, brit, bhara, one who, one that, one that bears a body. Any jivatma which has a body, right? So any, could refer to any jivatma. It could be any body. The body could be that of an animal. It could be of that of a bird. It could be that of a human being, anything. So examples for us are, uh, examples that we can think of over here. So for any being, he is a sharanya. He is the refuge. So then why would I not surrender unto him? So, the thinking of Swami Deshika is this. If Bhagavan is willing to grant moksha to any creature, hey, should I not surrender unto him and get his grace? Yes, right? So, it is to this Sharanyan, to this refuge, 
right? That Bhagavan Dejikan says, I will do prapatti in order to do moksha. Right? So he, he is full of compassion. He's just waiting. He's a sharanya. So I will just do surrender unto him. So this is what is important. Okay. So this is the beauty of this particular shloka. That every phrase is pointing out, pointing to why this surrender is, uh, is being done. Okay. So that's the Vishuddha Vijnana Ganaswarupa Devam Hayagriva Ham Prapatye. The Swarupa, then Vijnana Vishranana Baddha Diksham Devam Hayagriva Ham Prapatye. What Diksha he has taken? Dayanidhi Deva Mahagriva Maham Prapatye because he is uh, compassion personified. So, because out of his compassion, he will help us. Deha Britam Sharanya. Therefore, he is the Sharanya. He is the refuge for all. So, we will do Prapatye. Now, there are um, again a few words that uh, we have to pay a little more attention to here. Now, we find that in many of Swami Deshika's uh, stotras, right, he uses certain phrases which are directly taken from some of the uh, Upanishads you know, or uh, some such Pramana. So it, it kind of tells us something more, right? So when you say Vijnana Ghana, so here for instance, Vishuddha Vijnana Ghana Swarupam. So Vishuddha, so Jnanam Vishuddham Vimalam, we have a uh, Upanishadic statement which says that, that the Supreme Brahman, Parabrahma is Jnana, it is Vishuddha, it's pure. So we have those terms. So that is kind of alluded to over here. And this Vijnana Ghana, this Vijnana Ghana is a, again a very interesting term. So, so Ghana is something like it is it is uh, solid, right? So Vijnana Ghana, it's, it's just, if you have Vijnana, if you take knowledge and you just personify, if you if you can just put all knowledge together without any gap, right? If you just put it all together, so what whatever comes out, that is Hayagriva, that is Hayagriva Swarupa for us. Okay, so that's what is meant by Vijnana Ghana. So in fact, Vijnana Ghana Eva is a term that is used in uh, Brahadarani Kopanishad. Evam vare idam mahadbhuta manantaparam vijnana ghana eva. This is vijnana ghana. And to understand this vijnana ghana, in the Upanishads, they give a very interesting example of um, saindhava ghana. Okay, if you take a uh, salt, a, a salt, you know, um, a rock of salt or a small, um, what do you say, a solid salt um, substance that you take. Okay? If you look at it, it is full of saltiness, right? That's all it has. So that's why we say it is that there's only that particular rasa which is fully there. So we say it is saindava ghana, just as a salty substance, you know, salt, a rock of salt or a bit of salt is full of salt only, nothing else. So similarly, you're looking at Bhagavan as vijnana ghana, tightly packed vijnana, absolutely no gap. So that is the swarupa. So this vijnana ghana is a very interesting uh, word that we have over there. And similarly, Vijnana Vishranana. Of course, Vishranana is uh, is that, that the fact that he just wants to gift it. Okay, that's again a very beautiful term that we have out there. And Diksha, of course, we already looked at the meaning of the term Diksha. Um, why Bhagavan has taken this Diksha of protecting all is all out of his compassion. Uh, another thing that we said was that this um, shloka has elements of Sharanadati or Prapati which are embedded, Okay, which are alluded to in this shloka. Now, when we talk of prapatti, okay, so normally we talk about five uh, elements of prapatti which are important. So, which is anukulya sankalpaha, pratikulya varjanam, maha vishwasaha, karpanyam, voktritva varana. See, there are five terms. Now, I'll explain what these are. We don't have to remember these terms, but I'll explain what is the essence of this. So, anukulya sankalpa basically means that you're taking a sankalpa, you're, doing a, you're taking a vow to follow Whatever is favorable for Bhagavan, Anukula, whatever is Anukula for him. So, whatever Bhagavan has said, whatever is the dharma that we have to follow, we take a vow to follow whatever is ordained by Bhagavan or whatever is favorable for Bhagavan. So, Anukulya is a sankalpa. So, we will say, we will always follow you, Bhagavan. Whatever you have said, we will follow you. Next is Pratikulya Sya Varjana. So, whatever is Pratikula, whatever is against, whatever is unfair, which is not to be done, right? We will not do that. So we will not make mistakes, right? Or whatever is, um, whatever can become a mistake, we will avoid doing. This. So we will avoid doing whatever is against you. So pratikur yasya varcha. Third is maha vishwasa. Maha vishwasa is is a unbreakable faith or unshakable faith. Faith. You have maha. It's, it's great faith in him. It's unshakable faith that he will protect. 
he will always protect us. So we have that particular faith in him. It is that faith with, with which we do the surrender. And the fourth is Karpanya. Karpanya basically says to say that you are helpless. Now, you are going to surrender. You are saying, Bhagavan, you are my only refuge. I can't do anything on my own. I am helpless. Without your help, I can't do anything. So therefore, I seek your help. So you are my, you are my goal and you are my, I can't do anything on my own. So that feeling that I can't do anything, I am helpless. That is also a very important aspect of this Shabbat. And Gopthritva Varna. Now, you seek him as the protector. See, this is, these are the five elements. So following him, uh, following what was favorable for him, not doing things which are not favorable for him, absolute belief, right, that he will protect us. And the fourth is um, Karpanya, that is the feeling of absolute helplessness and then asking him to protect us. These are the five elements. We can see that these five elements are all over here. So, Anukulya Sankalpa basically means that you will follow whatever is um, is favorable. So, all his good qualities we need to uh, be aware of and understand. Right? So, a description of his Swarupa, the fa fa fact that he is Baddha Diksha. So, all these are um, indicative of that, uh, that, that we will follow all these qualities that, that he has. Okay, So, that is one thing. Pratikulya Varjana, we will not do anything which is against him. So, that is also another aspect. Uh, Mahavishwasaha. So the, the Diksha term here, Mahavishwasa is very, very important, right? So Mahavishwasa, I have complete faith in him. Why do I have that complete faith in him? Because of these three things, right? He is Vigyana, Vishtrananda, Baddha, Diksha. He has taken that vow that he will protect us, that he will give his knowledge. And he is Dayanidhi. He is full of compassion and he is our refuge. They have, for all beings, he is the refuge. So I have Mahavishwasa. I have total belief in him. I have total faith in him. Right, that he will protect. That's very important. And aham prapadhi, I, you know, me, a very meek creature. Okay, I'm such a uh, ordinary creature. Okay, I therefore can't do anything else. I can only do surrender. So please protect me. So this is the essence of this particular shloka. So sharanagati or prapadhi. So uh, Swami Deshika says, I can only do prapadhi, or I can try to do bhakti. But I think what will work for me is Prabhat. So in the first four shlokas, he has talked about Bhagavan Swarupam. He has talked about doing Bhakti to Bhagavan. But in the fifth shloka, he says, no, I will do Prabhat. Okay? Because that is what I think will protect me. That is what will give me the knowledge that I need in order to take me forward. That's the beauty of this particular shloka. So, Vishuddha Vijnana Ghanaswarupam Vijnana Vishranana Baddha Diksham Dayanidhim Ehabhritam Sharanyam Devam Hayagrivam Aham Prapati. This is the uh, shloka that we have. Just, I'll just read the shloka once again. Vishuddha Vidyana Ghanaswarupam Vidyana Vishranana Baddha Diksham Dayanidhim Ehabhritam Sharanyam Devam Hayagrivam Aham Prapati. The question here which says, Can Baddha Diksham be taken to mean, mean a firm vow? Yes, it is. A, you can take it as a firm vow. Oktritva. And how the fifth prapatti, um, Goptritva is that you are saying, you are seeking him as the protector. So Gopta, Gopta is one who will, who will protect me. So because we have said he is Deha Bhritam Sharanya and he is Vijnana Vishranana Baddha Diksha. Vijnana Vishranana. He is going to give his knowledge. Since he is giving his knowledge, so that, that the question basically is there about how that Goptritva is coming through. So Goptritva is one, is protection and you are asking him to protect he is a Gopta. He is a protector because he is do. He has got this diksha of Vijnana Vishranana of of spreading his knowledge. Therefore, I know he will protect me. So that is why I am doing prapatti to him. Yeah, Ghana can mean super saturated, derived from salt example. That also could be looked at it. So now um, let us move to the next part. Okay. Now, what is interesting here is these five um, shlokas that we have looked at so far, right? In some of the prachina. Um, texts, in some of the older texts in the Vyakhyana, in the uh, uh, in the explanation that have been given for these uh, shlokas, we find that there's a slightly different order of the shlokas. So I think it's important that we also know that this different order exists. And for this different order, there's a particular connect also that they have um, typically talked about. Okay? So let's look at what we have, um, what we have looked at so far and what is the difference that is there in the in some of the previous versions, in the older versions. 
So Jnananda Mayam Deva is what we started with. So there Upasmahe, we are saying we will do Upasana. We will pray to Bhagavan Hayagriva. So that's how we started. We said we are doing Mangalacharana. We are doing um, Namaskaram to Bhagavan and saying that we are praying to Bhagavan Hayagriva. We started with that. And then we went into Swata Siddham, Shuddha Spatika Mani Bhubrit Bhadivata, where we, in order to do a Manasa Stuti of his divine form, we looked at his form in a little more detail. So that was the second shloka. Third shloka, we said Samahara Samna and we said his Halahala Shabdam should remove our Antardvantam, our inner darkness. Okay? So we are praying for Vigna Nivritti. Any Vigna, any darkness is causing some kind of um, Vigna, some kind of a obstacle. So all obstacles to be removed, we prayed for that. Okay? Then there was a prayer for Sakshatkara, for having his Darshan, Prachi Sandhya. So Hridi Me Bhatu, we wanted his his form to shine forth in our hearts. Okay. So we found, then we saw that just that's not working. So I will do Sharanagati to him. Only that will work. Only then I will be able to. So he did Sharanagati in the Tuchroka. We should the Vijnana Prapadye. We have done Prapadye. This is the order that we saw. Okay. Now this alternate order that we see in um, some of the older versions is that we start, the first shloka is supposed to be Swata Siddha. What was number two here is number one in those versions. So here, the um, the understanding here is that Swami um, Deshika, the moment he had the vision of uh, Lord Hayagriva, right, his divine form, so he immediately did the Manasa Stuti of that divine form. So he started, so they start with therefore Swata Siddham Shuddha Spatikamani Bhogra Pradhivara. Okay, so that is the first one. And then after seeing that form, he is praying for Darshana. He wants that form to be there in his heart. Okay, so he is doing Prachi Sandhya, what we had as the Sakshatkara Shloka here has come as the second Shloka. Then, in order to get that Sakshatkara, he says, okay, let me do Bhakti. Okay, so I will do Jnananda Mayam Dhuvam, I will do Upasana for him. I will do Bhakti for him. So that is the third Shloka. And then, once he starts doing Bhakti, he says, okay, no, no, I think better than Bhakti is Prapati. That's an easier means for me. Therefore, he does Prapati. Vishuddha Vijnana becomes the fourth verse. And ha having done prapati, Bhagavan appears before him. So then he praises his halahala sound and says, okay, now let this halahala sound remove all the uh, obstacles that I have so that now I can start uh, doing the stotra that I, am, that I have started doing. Okay? So this is another uh, sequence that has been used. So there's a difference only in the first five uh, shlokas. From the sixth shloka onwards, the, the order is common. But this difference is there only in the first five uh, verses. So also uh, point to this and understand that this slight difference with very beautiful, uh, you know, uh, connect. See this, what we call as a Sangati, right? Or uh, discourse connectives as they are called. So you have these connectives which tell us how, you know, one shloka gets connected to the other shloka. This is a very, this is a very beautiful aspect of all our uh, granthas, right? Most of our granthas, whether it is sutram or whether it is shloka, or whatever it is, there is always a connect. And once we understand that connect, it becomes very, um, very enjoyable. So, so this is the uh, two different orders, just to understand that there are different orders. So, next we go to the um, sixth uh, verse. Apaurusheye irapivak prapanchaihi adhyapite bhuti madrishta param stuvannaham mugdha ititvayeva karunyato natha katakshaniyaha. Let me read it once more. Apaurusheye irapivak prapanchaihi. Adhyapite bhutim adrishta param stuvannaham mugdha ititvayeva karunyato natha katakshaniyaha. Let's look at the um, words that are there in this. Apaurusheyaihi api. Apaurusheyaihi api. That is written as apaurusheyai rapi. So the ra there becomes apaurusheyaihi and api. So. Vak prapanchaihi, vak prapanchaihi, that word as such. Adhyapi is adhya and api. Adhya plus api has become adhyapi. So we split that as adhya and api. Te bhutim adrishta param. Bhutim adrishta param, two words in that phrase, in that particular uh, word. Stuvan aham. Stuvan plus aham. That is stuvan aham. So stuvan aham. Mugdha iti, mugdha iti. So there is a visarga there. 
So that has to be added. Mugdaha iti. Twaya eva. Twaya eva. Twaya eva. Twaya eva. Karunyato. Karunyataha. Natha. Kadakshani yaha. Apaurushayehi. Api. Vak prapanchehi. Adya. Api. Te. Bhutim. Adrishtapara. Stuvan. Aham. Mugdaha iti. Twaya eva. Karunyataha. Natha. Katakshaniyaha. These are the different words that we have in this particular uh, shloka. So now let's look at the Anvaya, the word order. So the word order starts with, he is addressing Bhagavan as Natha. So He Natha. So we start with that Natha. And what is the verb here? The verb essentially here is um, Katakshaniya, Aham Katakshaniyaha. I am one who has to be uh, looked at by you. So that by you is katakshaniyaha. So katakshaniyaha. I have to be looked at by you with a lot of grace. Okay, so katakshaniyaha. So how should I be looked at? Karunyataha katakshaniyaha. I have to be looked at by you with karuna, with compassion. And tvaya, by you. Tvaya eva karunyataha katakshaniyaha. Okay, that's the uh, part. Why should I be looked at by you with karuna? Okay, for that he says, Apaurusheyehi vakprapanchehi api adya api adrishtaparam te bhutim stuvan aham mugdaha iti tvaya eva karunyataha katakshaniyaha. So he says, Apaurusheyehi vakprapanchehi api. Even by the vakprapancha, by the, uh, by the, World of words, which is the Vedas, which are Aparusheya, which are not created by man. Even the Vedas, even today, Adhyapi, even today, Adrishtaparam te bhutim stuvan. Te bhutim, your uh, glory. Okay? Your glory, even the Vedas have not been able to fathom. Even they have not been able to get to. But I am trying to do stuvan naham. But that bhuti, that we bhuti, that glory of yours, I am trying to praise. So, what a good act of mine, Mugdaha. So, you should look at me as a small, yeah, you know, as a, as a very silly person, right? As a very young boy. So, so please be merciful to me and please give me your kataksha. Okay? So, that's the, uh, that's what he's trying to say in this. Now, we look at the word by word meaning in more detail. So, hey Natha, hey Bhagavan. Apaurusheyehi. Paurusha. Purusha is human. Apaurusheya is that which is Created by human. So, apaurusheya is not created by human. So, even by the vak prapanchaihi, by the um, vak, vak refers to Vedas, prapancha, so world of Vedas, world of vak, world of speech, world of um, words is nothing but the Vedas, right? And these Vedas are, I mean, uh, world of words, you can look at it. And words which have not been composed by humans obviously refers to the Vedas. So, apaurushehi vakprapanchehi. Both these terms put together tell us that this vakprapancha, this whole body of knowledge, right, this collection of words, which is not composed by humans, which is essentially our Vedas, even these Vedas, vedaihi api, even by the Vedas, adhya api, adhya is today, even today, so which means Vedas have been trying from time immemorial and even today, they still have not been able to fathom your greatness. Even today, Adhyapi, Adrishta Para Te Bhuti. Para. Para is the other end. So if you have a river, you know, the other end of the river, the other uh, shore, right? That other side of the river. So the far end. That has not been seen. Drishta. Adrishta. It's not been seen yet. So which means they have not been able to cross and look at what is the end of this Bhuti of yours. Te, your Bhuti, your greatness, your prowess. That prowess, whose far end has not been seen even today, even by the Vedas, which are supposed to be apaurusheya, which are not, not even composed by humans. They are, they are divine in nature. Even the divine Vedas have not been able to see your greatness. But now, that bhuti, that greatness of yours, stuvan, praising, one who is praising that aham, I, one who is praising that bhuti of yours, Mugdahaiti. So, how should you look at me as a mugda, as a dumb, as a meek person? Mugdahaiti. As a meek person. Tvaya eva. Only by you. Eva. Only by you. Only by you you have to look at me. You have to 
karunyataha out of your kindness out of your compassion katakshaniya you have to show your kataksha kataksha normally refers to his side glance we say that in tamil we say kadaikan parve right so side glances so i have to be seen with your side glances your side glances have to fall on me out of compassion okay because what is what act i am trying to do because i am trying to do something which even the vedas have not been able to do the vedas which their greatness which are huge which are endless those vedas have not been able to see your end they have not been able to praise you they have not been able to fathom your uh, greatness but as i am trying to do that so how should you look at me you have to bless me how do you bless me out of your kindness out of compassion just i need your glance your slight glance is all i require so that will give me the vigyana that will give me the gyana with which i'll be able to praise you so we can see that um deshika swami is doing what we call as naicha anusandhana right so naicha anusandhana basically means nicha bhava you know looking at himself as you know i don't know anything you remember we, we talked about when we talked about sharanagati the previous shloka we said karpanyam they're saying that i i really don't know anything i am you know i am i am I'm such a poor creature i really can't do anything so that is what he is pointing out over here he says i am aham mukta hai so i am such a meek person so please have your karuna on me please have your compassion on me and do kataksha and please uh, just look at me with a just a small look at me right just a glance just give me a glance that should be enough is what he is trying to say here okay. so that's the uh, beauty of this uh, particular verse okay let's look at the bhavartha uh, i hope you understood the uh, word by word meaning here or simple terms so it's not very complicated as such illa let's look at the bhavartha so he says hey natha right oh natha the uh, vedas are said to be apaurusheya it is not created by humans and they are supposed to be authorless so apaurusheya so not created by humans so they are they are very they are of a divine nature so the vedas which are huge like a universe of shabdas and mantras right has so many shabdas so many mantras with many shakas so many branches are there so it is huge right and this huge universe of vedas they are trying to describe your swarupa and gunas paurusheyrapi vak prapanchehi bhuti madrishta param so they are trying to do stotra of you these vedas these vedas are trying to stotra of you with all the mantras and with all those different shakas are there but your greatness or prowess is such that even such powerful and vast vedas are unable to fathom that even today adhyapi so which means they have been trying for a long time even today they have not been able to uh, see the see the end of it obviously right because your glories your ananta kalyana gunas are limitless they are your kalyana gunas are ananta ananta means no end so when there is no end obviously they can't see the other end right so obvious it is obvious that they cannot see it so the vedas obviously cannot see the limit no no that being the case i am a very simple minded person right i am trying to praise you so what a boot act that i am trying to do right so so what should you do so all that is required is i ought to be seen by you with compassion as a naive child mukdha iti okay as a naive child trying to reach out to you all i am doing is trying to reach out to you so just pick me up just look at me right please consider me as an apt object for your compassionate kataksha i need your kataksha which is full of daya full of grace so that grace of yours has to just follow on, right so this is the uh, bhava this is the essence of this particular uh, verse that we have here okay so this naicha anusandhana right that looking at himself as a you know as a as an unfit person as a foolish person trying to do the impossible you know person who who is who has very limited capabilities and trying to do something which is limitless which is uh, which is almost impossible so he is asking for bhagwan's mercy okay. so so you can look at it like this so he has done prapatti in the previous shloka right so he saw that he has done prapatti now on doing prapatti he is able to see bhagwan's uh, divine form okay. so on seeing the divine form he realizes that he can't do justice to that divine form he can't do the stotram to do justice through that divine form unless he has the mercy of um, of bhagwan so he needs bhagwan's kataksha he needs that kataksha without that kataksha he can't do anything so he again goes into that that karpanya that naicha anusandhana and he says please you have to help me there's nothing that else i can do okay 
So in a way, you can look at it as this word, the, the play of words that uh, Swami Deshika has is always very interesting, right? So Mugdha Iti. So Mugdha is one, yes, is it? Almost uh, one who does not have uh, any great capabilities. Now from Mugdha, what is he trying to become? He's actually trying to become a Mukta. So Mukta is one who has who has been liberated, who has attained moksha. From Mukta, Bhagavan, uh, he wants to become Mukta. So he is obviously asking for Bhagavan's kataksha. That is another, it's a very interesting uh, phrase that uh, is that is there. And this is a very nice uh, observation in one of the Vyakhyas. That is an interesting aspect. Now, coming to this, Apaurusheihi api vak prapanchaihi. Now, how do we understand this? And we said that the vak prapancha, the Vedas cannot, have not been able to describe it. So what is the pramana we have for this? So as I said, always he will be um, definitely alluding to some um, some Shruti Vakya, some Upanishad Vakya, right? So here we have this um, in Taitri Upanishad, we have this Yato Vacho Nivartante Aprapya Manasasaha. So the Vedas, the Vak, right? Vachaha Nivartante, they return back. Aprapya, no, they are not able to reach. So no, unable to reach, they just come back. Yato Vacho Nivartante, this word, very interesting here, this word Nivartante. Nivartante is actually used in present tense, which means even today, they are coming back. They keep trying and they are unable to, re to, uh, to fathom him, unable to describe him, right? So, unable to uh, get to him, the words are coming back. So, the, uh, that is, that's a very interesting uh, phrase that we have there, nivartante. Okay, so, even today, so which is what Bhagavan says here, I mean, uh, uh, Swami Deshika says here, right? Adhyapi, even today, they have not been able to uh, see your uh, far end. Okay, they have not been able to see your, the, describe your view, your uh, promise. So that is um, one pramana that we have over there. Okay. Uh, another pramana that we can look at is again from Bhagavad Gita. In uh, again chapter ten, when in Vibhuti, when he is Bhagwan, uh, when Arjuna asks Bhagwan to describe his Vibhuti, now he says, "I want to know about your Swarupa fully." So that time Bhagwan says, "Nanto sti mama divya nam Vibhuti nam parantapa eshatu udeshatav proktaha Vibhute vistaro maya." In fact, when he starts, he says. My vibhuti is very big, okay, can't really uh, tell it very easily. But at the end, having described some of his greatness, he says, Na antaha asti mama divyana vibhutina. My divine prowess, there's no end to it. Okay, but uddeshata prokta. I can, I can give, I have given you a small glimpse into that. Just as, a, as an illustration, I have given you a few things. So you can understand from that. So that is uh, what he says. So Bhagavan himself has said, that he that his vibhuti is limitless, right? So that is so his bhuti is adrishta par. It cannot it, its end cannot be seen. So that also we have a pramana for that. Okay. And for the apaurusheya, right? That it is not a human created, right? So we have again uh, from Mahabharata there is a shloka which says anadi nidhana hyesha vagutsrishta swayambhuva. So um, swayambhu uh, Brahma. Again, he recreates, right, from the Vedas, from the Anadi Nidhana. It has no beginning, it has no end. So, it means it exists forever. It is Nitya. So, it is something which is there forever. So, if it is created by someone, then there is a beginning to it, right? When we say there is no beginning or no end, it means it exists forever. So, it's obviously, it is not man-made. So that's also very important aspect. So, Apaurusheya and uh, his Bhuti is Adrishtapar. There's no end, there's no limit to his uh, prowess. So, for all these things, we can see how um, various aspects of Shruti and Smriti are brought into this shloka. And, uh, yeah. Now, another very interesting uh, usage of the word Natha and Kathakshaniya. Okay. Natha, uh, basically, you say Natha is Lord or, you know, um, as, a, as, as one who is a ruler and so on. So, Natha similar, uh, typically is used um, as one who, to, who is to be prayed to. So, that is uh, a typical... Uh, usage of that word. So when you say katakshaniya, so only one who can give can be prayed to, right? So I need your kataksha. So uh, dayaniya, you know, I am one who needs your daya. I need your compassion. So because I need daya, right? So how do I address you? I address you as natha. Because you are the one who gives daya. So natha and katakshaniya, that uh, combination of words is also a very interesting usage that we see over here. Yeah, another int very interesting aspect that we can also see here is um, 
this eva you know this word eva only so he says twaya eva only by you i have to be uh, seen right so this only can actually be um, connected to three places you can say twaya eva karunyataha kataakshaniha only by you i am to be seen with compassion that is one aspect second you can say twaya karunyataha eva kataakshaniha by you karunyataha eva only out of grace there is no other reason why you should uh, look at me because i am such a small person right there nothing that i have done to be worthy of your glance but karunyataha eva only out of your kar karuna only out of your your compassion aham kataakshani i am to be looked at okay that is a second or you can say twaya karunyataha kataakshaniyaha eva i have to be you know you, i have to be looked at by you is all that that i need nothing else will work for me only your kataaksha will work for me therefore kataakshaniya eva yeah. so you can put the eva the only pa, the word only along with kataakshani also so you can see how when you move the eva word to these different places the meaning gets enhanced further and and that uh, and the power of uh, in 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 doing that prapatti and out of that prapatti out of that uh, you know of that naichana sandanam of that feeling that i can't do anything you have i need your grace so that part is what is conveyed again and again by each of these words combination of words every word in itself uh, conveys that and the combinations of the words also um, bring it out in a more powerful manner okay so that is uh, what we are seeing in this particular shloka as well so this is a uh, again another very beautiful uh, shloka that we have looked at ಅಪೌರುಷೇಯೈರಪಿಕ್ಷಣೀಯಸ i will i am appealing to you you are the one who has to give me this and this again there is also this word bhuti you no know, this bhuti also is a very interesting word um normally when we talk of um bhuti so bhuman bhuman and bhuti it's, it's kind of you look at it as a feminine form of that so this bhuman that is vastness or full of uh, prowess so this word is um is uh, is taken up as a full ad, full um, adhikarana in in uh, brahma sutra we have what is called as bhuma adhikarana so where bhagwan is described as something who is bhuma who is full of bhuti different types of bhuti so this bhuti therefore again is another term which which again points to bhagwan as he is the supreme brahman so that supreme brahman's promise obviously even the vedas can't describe so how can i describe that how can i do stotram for that so you please help me in doing this stotra and then uh, he starts the stotram from the next stanza onwards apaurusheyairapi vak prapanchaihi adhyapite bhutim adrishta param stuvannaham mugdha iti tvayeva karunyato nath katakshaniyah see that there are some questions okay please explain the last component of prapatti again ram ram has okay um yeah somebody has asked for explain the last component of prapatti again i'll come to that um ram ram um, yeah sorry has ghana anything to do with cloud okay uh ghana in this context is not referring to cloud it is referring to some something which is solid vijnana ghana so that is the meaning that we have here yeah is there any specific incidents as to why bhagwan took the hayagriva form that particular form uh, of hayagriva i think this, there was a question on this in the last class also um, i need to find a pramana for this i have not uh, found any pramana that says why exactly hayagriva form as such um, we will look into that there was only one um, specific incidents where it said that he in order to kill an asura who had taken the hayagriva form bhagwan took the hayagriva form so that was one incident that we uh, that is there in the puranas 
but other than that uh, if there is there is there any other further thing we need to kind of look a little deeper into that so somebody has asked can we also have karunyata eva yes which is what we looked at right so i think the question must have been asked even before we came to that part so karunyata eva yes tvaya uh, eva karunyata eva kadakshiniya eva so all these three places we can have the please explain the last part yeah somebody is asking about vishuddhi chakra and vishuddha in stanza 5 um again i we will have to dig deeper into that i am not sure if there is a direct connection between those two last part as in the sense the tvaya eva karunyata okay, i'll just explain uh, the whole thing again uh, briefly so that you understand what we are saying over here so um, tvaya katakshaniya i have to be looked at by you I, i need your glance at me so that is what we are asking for mugdha iti why because i am a mugdha i am a fool i really don't have my my capabilities are very very limited therefore you have to look at me uh, with your uh, grace karunyataha and why should you do that karunyataha eva only out of compassion you have to look at me. and katakshaniya eva i have to be looked at by you because i have done surrender to you only you have to take care of me tvaya eva and only by you no else nobody else can take care of me right so therefore only you you are my only refuge and only you can bring me out of this of the state that i am in and what should you help me to do you should help me in doing this prayer that i am trying to do i am trying to pray to you i am trying to describe your form right even the vedas which are considered to be apaurushay of tanitya right which are there forever even those vedas have not been able to find the, your end okay? they have come back aprapya manasas they are coming back they are unable to reach uh, um, who you are they are not unable to describe your qualities so for that kind of a person that like you are i am trying to describe and i am trying to pray so that for that i require your compassion i need your kataksha so that is a prayer for a prayer for this kataksha there is a comment um, where somebody is giving a reference to the horse form in many passages the horse is related with the sun examine the references in the rigveda to the horse is proper which stood in highest esteem the most striking example for this is steed the dikri one which is sung in the four hymns of the veda okay so yeah maybe you can share that um, that reference maybe in the whatsapp group or something like that and then we can take it from there yeah so so i think the person got it yeah got the answer okay um I'll, I'll, just one word on the uh, logistics aspect so the what for the whatsapp group that we were talking about um so it has the link has been shared to you via mail so you can use that uh, that link to join the whatsapp group and the group will be opened uh, after the class today and uh, will be open for about a couple of days where we can we can ask questions and i can uh, we can we can give the answers or any such interesting information can be shared but please uh, maintain all the uh, rules that we have for the group so as has been pointed out in the mail just uh, please follow that that's the request so yeah so i think we will uh, there are no further questions i think we can close with this two shlokas today so we have done shloka 5 and 6 today we will take up seventh shloka in the next class kavita arkika simhaya kalyana guna shalini shrimate venkateshaya vedanta gurave namaha dhanyavadaha Thank you.